Okay, hi everybody. Welcome back to the boat shop. The poop is about to get real today. If you're just joining us, we are building radio-controlled racing hydroplanes because it's just the most beautiful sport ever and it's super fun and it's super difficult. So it's all of those things that you need. These are just a couple of the boats that I've built. Uh, the one we are building right now is a kit boat. Uh, we are making some modifications, but if you have just bought the kit and you want to assemble it without having to do all the crazy things I'm doing, you are here at the right time because we are going to begin assembly now. It'll look pretty similar to this one once it's the one we are building is assembled. Uh, this is a gas-powered boat. This is a little bit larger than the one we're going to be building today and in subsequent videos. Please forgive the terrible lighting. Hopefully this improves a little bit. I'm hand holding the phone right now. We're going to switch to the GoPro when we go to begin assembly here. Again, if you're just joining us, we are building what will look pretty much identical to this one. It is the Eliminator. It was a real full-sized hydroplane that ran in 1981. I believe it ran very very unsuccessfully this one I built this one several years ago we powered it originally as a nitro powered boat Ooh, that's got magnets holding it down hang on I can get it easily from here I have since converted it to electric it's a proven winner this boat has run a lot so you definitely see some bumps and bruises it not only has it run a lot, it has won a lot. And we're building another one. Although the, the new one we're going to build is going to be nitro powered all over again. There can only be one of each given model in our club running at a time. So much like the full size Unlimited, you don't see two of the same boats running at the same time. That would be ridiculous. So we're building another version of this, but can't be electric, so it's going to be nitro. And we're making a bunch more modifications. If you aren't aware of those, go back in this video series and you will see many of the things we have done. This is Jackson Brown, the shop dog, enjoying a rare day of a little bit of sun here. This lighting just might not work. I think the camera will adjust. If you've been following along, by now you have all of these pencil lines scribed everywhere that we're going to be epoxying. You've done that on all of these parts as well. You can see the pencil lines uh, up above the groove there where these pieces are going to get epoxied. As well as, of course, along the bottom. I've done a few things since we were together last. Remember we talked about cutting out some of the supports that were in this piece. It's way overbuilt. The kit is way overbuilt, which is better than making it flimsy and having it fall apart. But there's a couple of reasons why these have been cut out. One is for fuel tanks. One is for potential um, battery installation. The, uh, the, the third reason is just, again, it's overbuilt. So it's lighter weight to remove things. Speaking of lighter weight, where's the pieces? Over here. I don't think we talked about this earlier. Maybe we did. If, again, if you've been following along, you know what this piece is. And you know what you're looking at here, where I have cut this rear section out. There's a whole bunch of material that doesn't need to be there. There's actually some we could cut out here further forward. Let me turn this over. There's our pencil line of where it will get laminated to another piece. But out right here is where the sponsons attach. And so I keep this area uh, full size and strong. But back here doesn't need to be there. So cut that out, if you will, if you like. I've done another thing just because I've had um, too, too much time to think. Boy, I, you know, I've been getting over the, uh, the illness of which we do not speak. And now all of a sudden I'm not feeling well again, which is brutally unfair. So I've had too much time to sit around and think about it. As you know, if you've been building along, we've added these, these extra sticks here, and that gives us more glue surface. This lighting is awful. I'm going to go back over here again and hope that the sun moves quickly or that the GoPro works better. We've talked about this, again, back up in the videos if you need to. 
once again you see our pencil marks so we know where to apply epoxy without omitting anything. These pieces, these sticks, are now radiused because I sanded the daylights out of them to take that inside corner off of them. If you think about that, see this hole, let's talk about that as though that were the end of a stick. And we're gluing on the bottom and we're gluing on the side to our structure. All this extra area out here does nothing. You could really cut it at an angle all the way across here and you would cut its weight in half and I don't think you'd change the strength at all. I'd like to get some triangle sticks. Anybody know if you can get uh, 3 16 triangular shaped sticks? That would be really cool. I would use those exclusively. Uh, leave me a message. Okay, I'm going to switch to the GoPro and I'm going to take a look at the lighting and we're going to put this together. Okay, here we go. Okay, what we've done here is we've scooted over, try to get out of the sun, which is a darn shame, but for, uh, do it, it's all for you. And you know what? That color's not near as good on the GoPro, is it? I'm hoping to get a new one one of these days. If you guys will uh, click my uh, advertisements every now and then, I'll get about 12 cents a year from all that. And uh, when I'm about 147, I'll get a new camera. Okay, did you notice we've removed the floor and we've put wax paper underneath it all the way around. I think for the obvious reasons we're going to be gluing out here on these outer edges and we really don't want to glue to the jig. Glue is going to get through all of these various holes and slots and that would glue us to the jig. So lift it off, wax paper, put the screws back in, square it up using a long straight edge with your sponson runners right here. Okay, so that's what I've done. I've also, you'll remember, if you've been following along, if not, go back. This is something you do need to know how to do. We have mocked this up several times now. One of the things we did is we determined exactly the height we want our floor at. And we've set support right in that area. And I've put a little dab of star bond on there so it holds, okay? This guy's not gonna squirt and get away from me. You'll remember also, we raised the floor kind of in the midway through the radius here. And I have that piece, the little dab of star bond to hold it there. So that this floor right now, this height right here is precisely what we want. So whatever we do, we just make sure we come back to this and we'll be putting some weights on here to hold it into place. Yes, I know you've seen this over here and you're wondering why that's there. It's gonna help us, you'll see. It'll, I, it'll make sense in a minute, but I can just show you really quickly. During your mock-ups, pay attention to how this is going to go together and how you will be able to glue it without making a horrible mess and in, in, uh, just having a, a really rotten time. This piece is just a little bit warped. I've tried to straighten it out. It won't straighten, that's fine. This is going to hold it in place as we put the transom on and I pull these pieces into place, okay? This swings over pretty hard if I don't. Now when I put the rest of the pieces on and the bull nose on, that's going to hold it, but this is only going to stay there to help me while we're gluing it so that I'm not smearing thickened epoxy all over the place, okay? Thickened epoxy, what am I talking about? We're going to use a little bit of thickened epoxy. This is West Systems Collo colloidal? Collo colloidal silica. 406, at any rate. If I think of it, I'll put a link in my description below. Go, go down, uh, click the button that says, it's not a button, but it says more in the little description, and it'll open way up. You might have to click more a couple times, that's how YouTube does it. And you'll see a bunch of links where you can just go straight to this stuff and get it. Note that I am an Amazon affiliate. If you buy stuff through my links, I get a tiny kickback. Doesn't cost you any more, but it helps out the channel and it helps me out, which is awesome. Okay, so right now, the only things we're going to assemble is going to be transom, engine runners, and all of our structural cross pieces here, okay? The outsides, the forward sponson runners, that stuff goes on later. 
you could probably just keep going if you're super duper gung-ho. I don't have that kind of time. Plus, I just like to move a little bit more carefully. What if you discover you've made a grievous error? You have less to tear apart if you have assembled less. Okay, let's do it. This piece on this particular kit tucks into this transom piece, right? So at the end of the day, this is our very first piece, but we can't just let it stand there. So together, these two is where we start. Then we put this one in because it tucks in here. Can you see that? Yeah, it's supposed to. Okay, then we put all of our cross pieces in, we put our bull nose on, we weight it, we use clamps, we do all kinds of fancy stuff. We make this thing straight, perfect, beautiful, and you walk away, <laughs> leave it alone. Don't touch it until it's good and ready. One of the things you have done, you haven't? Okay, then you should is make sure that where all of these pieces intersect, look at that, got some loose wood there. I'll take care of that. Where all these pieces intersect, you need to make sure that these cross pieces hit the floor. So that they, in other words, they intersect fully enough. It probably makes sense to you already, but let's just make sure. That if anything, there's a little bit of space between these pieces, okay? Because if there's a little bit of gap right here, it doesn't matter. But if this piece is extended, I'm going to exaggerate here, such that your cross piece isn't hitting the floor, now we're distorting the upper surface, we're distorting the whole boat, nothing works right. So you're going to do that everywhere this intersects. Here, you're just going to file this out a little bit if you need to. Um, you will find in many cases what you need to clean up is this area right here because you we've added this piece on right oh look at that pretty radius see don't you feel better about that can you see that and anyway uh, it's nicely radius I grabbed a little bit of 80 grit and I just sanded my brains out on this and then I followed up with a little uh, 100 and cleaned it up a little bit and it looks it looks really nice nobody's ever gonna see it but I feel so much better um, anyway, you, you will find that you need to deepen these notches much of the time, okay? So that this fits all the way in there. Especially if you got careless and you left a whole bunch of epoxy here in this groove here, because this little square corner right here is what's going to hit it. Okay, so file it, sand it, do whatever you got to do to all of these pieces fit fully all the way, all of them, okay? Up here, we've done the same thing here, made sure these pieces will be flat on the floor because everything else builds off of that all right okay do that you've done that good let's assemble it epoxy in this joint all the way along here all the way along here and we're gonna put it on here okay yes all right let's do it I wasn't ready Remnants from my old big boat racing days. <laughs> it's the best thing to do with that kind of stuff. Best thing to do with big boat racing is don't do it. Why? Because it is horribly expensive. And you learn nothing. What are you going to do? You're going to experiment and then the boat goes over and somebody gets hurt. This way. This way. I've learned so much more building toy boats than I ever did working on big boats. By the way, draw a Sharpie line on each one where the original position is. And then over time, you can see if they, if they stay fairly even, it'll give you a good indication of how good a job you're doing with your one-to-one -one mixing, and if you're favoring one or the other, don't play favorites now. So it's already pretty viscous, although it looks like that's gonna run away, isn't it? Yeah, I better, I better thicken it. Show you how we do that anyway, it's kind of fun. Okay, it's not fun, but it's something you need to know. 
Meanwhile, while it's just wet, I'm going to go ahead and wet out all of the places that I want to right now. Front to rear right here, remember? Okay, so the SD card filled up on my GoPro, so I have no idea if you guys, or how much you guys missed. And now my epoxy is halfway set because I had to run in the house, dump the videos off the card. So this is a lot of fun. And then, of course, by the time I came back out here, the sun had moved and ruining our image again. Wouldn't want to screw up our image. So I think at some point I was talking about why I'm wetting this out before I just go ahead and throw the thickened epoxy at it. A couple reasons. Number one is a thickened epoxy will tend to just stand up on the wood and might not really bite down well. Well, it really won't bite very down well into the grain. And I want a better bite into the grain, even though this isn't, it's not like these joints are aerospace or anything. Truth is, as long as it's kind of sort of stuck in a number of places, you're good. Transom we want really well sealed, but. So what's the other reason? The other reason is I, even if it's not sticking well in a given area, I want there to have been epoxy there. You don't want the spot to be dry, right? If it is dry, water will soak in and you will see it later. You'll see it as dark streaks in your wood where the water's traveling up the grain. Makes you look like a bad builder. Don't be a bad builder. We're gonna shove a little epoxy in here. Kind of the same reasons. First of all, I want it to stick. Second of all, I want it into the grain on the end of those cutouts. I'm gonna hit this joint right now so I don't forget. Same thing, see I wanna go in here just make sure I'm not leaving any of that grain open. So I'm just looking for the wood to change tone a little bit. I'm sure you've seen that if you've epoxied before or stained anything, it'll always darken just slightly when it's wet. How far up here are we gonna go? All the way, yes, we're putting the bull nose on now, so. Not now, but within this epoxy session. As long as the epoxy still has a pretty good tack to it, fresh epoxy will stick to it, 100% bond. 100%, is anything ever 100%? It will stick to it very, very well. Oh yeah, these bricks will be handy in a minute. Stick around to the end of the video before you start gluing yours together and you'll see my setup process. Once we start weighting everything, you'll see how seriously we take that. Let's see, we're not putting the outer portions on yet, so we don't do anything out here. Everywhere else we do. And we're doing this slot, aren't we? Let's do that right now. Buddy of mine, the greatest driver ever in RC Unlimited. So that's verified. He has more wins than anybody ever. Nobody will ever catch him. It's, it's truly ridiculous. Anyway, good friend. Uh, the way he talks about building lightweight boats is he says that Boeing doesn't design aircraft to hit the ground. So why do we design boats to hit the shore? A couple of reasons. One is ours are probably going to hit the shore. So there is that argument. I haven't presented that to David at this point. Uh, again, he's the top dog. You don't you don't mess with uh, perfection. But um, in that aspect, he's wrong. It, it's it's kind of nice to have a boat that 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 can survive an impact. Actually, I don't know if that's nice because I never build my boats that way. I make my boats extremely light, and they tend to just explode when I hit things. If you haven't seen that, go back in my channel, and you will find where last season, uh, oh, the, the boat that you saw when I opened up this video, the Stro Light, I, I blew each sponson off it one at a time. It was a lot of fun. And we rebuilt it, we, re we did it together, so go check out those videos, it's kind of fun. All right, so that's pretty wet everywhere. Well, let's put a little bit of 
West Systems 406 colloidal silica in there. Just a little. I really like the 406. It's my favorite. There's a number of different fillers. If you just go look at West Systems, you'll get really confused. So just go to my link, get the 406. Uh, it is the best all-around filler. West Systems, I believe, would t say so themselves. Um, it, and what it, where it shines is in bonding with fillets, which we're kind of not doing right now. We will be later on. But by that they mean it, it, it fills gaps and, and still has a lot of strength. They make some high density fillers, which is all well and good, but you got to use a ton of it to get this stuff to thicken up. See, that's pretty heavy. It's not going to run away too fast. In some cases, in fact, I am mean, going to go a little bit more here. In some cases, you'll want to thicken it so much that it's just like peanut butter, where, where it'll stay absolutely wherever you put it. And in, in vertical seams and stuff, that's super duper useful because otherwise the epoxy will just sit in there and run out if you leave it thin. So we will thicken this up a little bit so I can put it in the joint between the two parts and it'll stay and so that it stays everywhere else I put it. Okay, I still see it running away a little bit, but I think in small quantities like in that joint, I think it will stay. Okay, let's get some of the thoroughly thickened stuff here. And we're just going to shove some up in here. Kind of like that. See it standing there? Super duper. So we're just kind of dabbing this on there now. We'll let it push out and do its thing. put this piece on. I'm going to keep this front up in the air for a minute. Like that. Epoxy pushing out everywhere. You know, it pushes out the back. You're like, yeah, I can sand that off. Yeah, but why make extra work? So we're going to tidy it up quite a bit. Okay, we're going to put a little bit of pressure on it. Not a lot. We don't got to get nuts, right? Okay. Right, and you say that's good okay what are you gonna do are you gonna put a square on it and hope it stays now we're gonna make sure it stays square that is right I mean we want this guy straight up and down just so that when we're mounting our rudder we're not dealing with tilting our rudder one way or another or having to shim it and plus we feel good if we make it nice and straight we could check it with this that'd be fine eh. we're gonna take this guy here Throw it on here. Okay, these are called one, two, three blocks, by the way. They're machinist blocks. They're really great for machining things because they are one inch, two inch, and three inch. And they're quite precise. These are cheap ones, so they're approximately one, two, and three inch. And you can see we're way off. I'm going to push it into place. And I'm going to clamp it. You got to get the clamp on there really square. Have you ever clamped something and you find you didn't have the clamp real square and you actually pull one side up or something? I'm checking. It is sitting well onto the floor. I've clamped it well onto the transom. That transom is being held squarely. Now I may want to put a little bit more pressure here towards the middle just to make sure that it's sitting down all the way that when I've clamped this it hasn't tended to draw it up. I think we're just going to put one in the middle here. I think that's all I need. I was pretty careful when I uh, when I trimmed all this, made it fit well. You can see this is lifting up a little bit.
get you a bunch of little 3 16 pieces ready. We're not going to put in any of these upper stringer pieces yet, but you do want this to stay in line and not push out of shape. So stick one in here and there if you think it's moving. Yeah, maybe it'll get kind of glued in there, but you, you, can, uh, you can carve that out later real easily. Okay, I like that. That's putting pressure on that outboard. Let's do that here as much as we can. Nice and square. Nice and square. Okay, we're fine. That's home for the transom. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Next piece we're going to put on as we put this engine well piece on is this forward one. You remember the kits, I don't know if we've talked about this recently, have handy markings. So part E, if you lose track of where you're at, E. We've sanded some of that off in an earlier video, so we're going to put epoxy on here. We're going to put epoxy in here. We're going to put epoxy across here. We're going to put epoxy here and on here and on here and put this one on. Here we go. Are you worried about that epoxy setting over there? Don't. It'll take a long time. It's cool enough out here that this stuff will give me a good 45 minutes. Especially when it's spread out thin. When epoxy's together, uh, by together, uh, if you have a deep cup full of epoxy, the chemical reaction actually warms it up a little bit and that accelerates it. You get it spread out thin like this, it, it sits there like that for a long time. That doesn't mean you can go have lunch or anything. You got to keep going. But it's one of the reasons I don't try to bite off too much and, and do too much work all at once. Main reason is I want to make sure that what I have done is good and straight and square and that I walk away and let it thoroughly harden that way, which is, you know, a solid 24 hours. You may have noticed that I haven't cut out holes for the fuel tanks yet. I actually have a pattern done for that that I'm not going to send to you. No, don't take it personally. It's just I don't want to have to send it to everybody. We can do it together and we'll do it in a learning fashion when we do it together here instead of me just cutting out the pattern and, and wishing you good luck, you know. I'll, I'll show you how we do that together here, so stick with me. That's a later video, by golly. But we'll get to it. You get on this end grain on this light ply material. Have we talked about light ply before? This is two pieces of 1 8 inch plywood laminated together. Each piece has three layers. Two outer layers of a fairly hard wood and a lighter wood in the middle. And it being a light wood, in other words, what that means is it just has larger holes, you know, larger grain, and so it, it soaks the epoxy in like crazy. You'll see those areas seem to dry up as they just draw the epoxy up inside. And if all the epoxy gets sucked up in there, you got nothing left to glue with, so you do want to pay attention to that a little bit. Okay, let's, th wait, we didn't uh, do the bottom of the the other engine well. Man, you guys aren't paying attention. <laughs> this is also some of that light play. How do you tell the difference? Um, the heavier ply, stronger in other words, and heavier. They should, they should call it heavy ply. The stronger, heavier stuff is five ply and you can really see it. It really stands out, the difference.
I might be using a little bit more right here. Remember, this is where our turn fin's gonna be and our motor's gonna be mounted up here. There's gonna be a lot going on, so I need that to be pretty stout. I'm gonna stand some on the back here where we push this up inside that other piece. And we'll let any excess just come squishing out and we'll wipe it away. By now you've screamed at the screen that this process is overkill and you are not wrong. If you don't want to hit it this hard, you don't have to. And your boat will be fine. I am pretty sure that you could simply e thicken some epoxy, slap it on there and put it together and it, you, nobody would ever know the difference. But this way I know that I've done the best that I can. This piece nice and straight. It will stay where I ask it to. Oh, you know what? Forgot to stand a little on the end here. We do need that, you know, cause there's a lot of, a lot of twist taking place on that transom. And all this piece is doing is button up against it. You know what I mean? It doesn't interlock. So let's, let's make sure we attach it well. Okay. I do not know why that's fighting me. Is that the wrong piece? That's the D. Why don't you tell me that? Yeah, I got an idea. Let's put in the D piece. <clears throat> Did you notice that as I was as I was doing that? Maybe we need to do a live stream where you guys can tell me. I, I think that was. Did you Did you think that was a little short on the resin? I did too. Did you notice all these uh, burn marks here from the laser? That's a real bone I got to pick with Mike. That's that's really not typical for his his products. I and I don't know anything about laser cutting, but I, I'm going to guess there's an adjustment or or something was slightly out of whack. All the pieces these had a lot of burn marks on the inside. I sanded it away as much as I could. I leave the interior of my boats just plain wood. I think I showed it to you earlier in this video on, on one of the other boats. And and I didn't want all those burn marks showing. So I, I sanded all those away. You might want to do that on yours if you don't plan to paint the interior of your boat. I wouldn't. Clean it up real nice, leave it wood. It just it looks it's just a really cool look. Maybe you disagree and then I could agree with you, but at that point, we'd both be wrong, so. Okay, so I have found the limitations of the GoPro. I can't hold all that much on the card, and I don't have more cards. Uh, been just tons more of the same. Just been epoxing all of these joints really, really well. Next thing I'm going to do is epoxy this front area here pretty thoroughly. These slots on the bull nose and across the bottom. We'll install it. And just as we had done before, you need to rig up some way by which you can put a little bit of pressure on it. And I've made this clamp arrangement here so that I can put a little bit of pressure rearward. And then we're going to put weight everywhere on here as needed to get all of these pieces pressed down thoroughly. Okay? This is why we have a whole bunch of bricks handy and some uh, weed whacker batteries and such. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll come back and we'll talk here in just a minute. All right, if you've done it right, your setup should look something like this. So a little pressure here. 
good deal of weight here. I've pushed and wiggled and made sure that it's correct. Now's the time you want to check each side. Sorry, I'm trying, again, I'm trying to do this just with my phone now. Five and three quarter at the back corner of my slot. I verified this number, by the way, do that before you disassemble your mock-up. Find out exactly where this is with your mock-up set up and your sponson tips, remember, at the right height. Check this spot right here. So five and three quarter. I didn't check the other side yet, but I did when I set my, my support there. Five and three quarter. Sorry, again, that's tough phone but that GoPro thing isn't working out so good maybe I'll pick up a new one I really been thinking about it so okay so my heights here are perfect but now what about the position of this bull nose it can squirt around right you can it can actually squirm side to side nothing is holding it in position except the pressure and so to align that I've simply put a straight edge on there and popsicle stick works right for mine to check that clearance side to side okay so it's centered up you'll find if you haven't noticed already or thought about it you'll have a 16th inch overhang on your floor or you should if you don't something's wrong remember that's where the outside piece now comes on and sits over the floor that 1 16th so you should see that on each side and that means you have done a good thing all right now i'm going to put you a link for these or you can find whatever suits you but these are really really handy you got a small tip over here and a really small pretty decent little radius on this end this is the biggest fillet that i'm allowing you to use run around this thing now and everywhere that epoxy is oozing out run that across Get rid of that extra epoxy. Do that everywhere that you see it squirting out. You should see a little bit of epoxy coming out everywhere. And if you did a really good job, it's just a tiny bit. But fillets are nice, especially on things like the bull nose where the floor meets it. So a nice fillet there is a good thing. Uh, it looks nice here and there when you do it. I don't know if I got any other places I can show you really well. One place I want you to do it no matter what is back here on the, um, the transom. Go ahead and if you need to, grab a little bit of your leftover thickened epoxy and lay a fillet on each side. Run it up here. I don't know if you can tell. I've already done that. See how well that's, that's really well epoxied all the way around there. You really want this holding on nicely. Now, I have not done it down here at the bottom where transom meets the floor on this interior or along these inside areas here. Don't do it because we're going to overlay this. We're going to reinforce this and we'll put some pretty fillets on there when we go in there and do that. So that part should not have tons of epoxy sticking out. But everywhere that I could with relative ease, I've done that. Everywhere else, I've gone around this thing pulled off all the extra epoxy, weighted it really well. You don't have to worry about doing fancy fillets in here yet. Oh, come on now, because we will do that later. Did that push that back down? Yeah, it did. Okay, there you go. I laid a nice fillet in here. All right, if yours looks like that, the next thing I want you to do is walk away. Walk away. Leave it alone. Don't take the weights off. Don't take it off the jig. Leave it there. Go do something else for a while, okay? We're going to meet again. See you soon.